This is one of the deadliest spiders on the planet. And it's even said that they'll go out of their way to harm humans. Ooh, let's see what she'll do here. This is the moment of truth. Spiders scare people more than any other animal on Earth. But among the over 50,000 species that could make your skin crawl, there is one that stands out from the rest. Legends have been told for generations about a spider hiding deep in the jungles of Central and South America. Armed with the deadliest venom of any arachnid and an infamously bad temper to match, the Brazilian Wandering Spider. Just the mention of that name online prompts terrifying tales of aggressive wandering spiders attacking any human unfortunate enough to cross their path, neutralizing anything they see as a threat with a bite that can kill you within hours. And while stories like this are usually just misunderstandings rooted in fear, even trusted sources of ours confirm that the wandering spider is different. There's only one way to find out if this is true though, and that's to catch one for ourselves. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you become an insider in the natural world. And that means confronting the strangest and deadliest animals on Earth to show you the truth about their stories that most people never get to see. In our years of working with the planet's most feared wildlife, we've seen many widely held myths shattered by encounters that change everything people think they know about dangerous animals. And tonight, we are going to fulfill our lifelong dream of putting the wandering spider to that ultimate test. We have come to the cloud forests of northern Ecuador alongside our good friend Spencer to track down one of these infamous arachnids. And after several amazing but unsuccessful nights of exploring this unparalleled ecosystem, Spencer spotted a spider that looks exactly like the wanderer we've come so far to find. All that's left to do now is catch it. Yo, big spider. How big? Big. You got the camera? Are you rolling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am actually. Oh. Um, come here. Oh. Dude, that looks. That is not a Coupianius. That looks like the wandering spider. You got stripe do you have on a, the back. Do you have a container? Yeah, I do. Mm. Ooh. Careful. Mm -hmm. Nice. Wow. That is wild. Look at you. Dude right here in this container. That is a Brazilian wandering spider. We're gonna get her in a bit of more of a controlled situation. These are dangerously, dangerously venomous. Oh, I, cannot, I can't contain myself, I'm like. <laughs> All right, now this is really exciting. In this capsule here is a wandering spider. Now you may be familiar with the Brazilian wandering spider, but that name is a little bit misleading because it refers to a whole genus of spiders, the genus Phonutria, which this spider belongs to. Now this is actually Phonutria depilata. Do you think we can get her out of the capsule and all Oh, easily, yeah. Onto a piece now, of bark or something? We were able to tell that species, number one, based on range. Of the Phonutria, that's the most common species in this area. Get a smaller stick. Uh, yeah. Close work. Yeah, just sure. want to get her out of the tube and into some better light. I keep her as stress-free as possible. So I just coax her out. There you go, sweetie. Yeah. There you go. So she's not happy about this, but you can see right there, she's not doing anything super jerky. This is not a spider that is overly agitated. And that's good because, tell you what, these guys have a pretty toxic venom. They do possess a medically significant bite. They have a highly potent neurotoxic venom that you certainly would not want to mess with. We typically measure toxicity of venom based on a lethal dose. And to give you kind of perspective on how toxic this spider is, the deadliest snake on the planet is the inland taipan in Australia. By lethal dose, drop for drop, this animal is seven times more toxic than that snake. Now, of course, dosage makes the poison, so the amount of venom you receive is important, but the biggest question is how likely are you to actually receive a bite from this spider? That's a great question, and there are actually a lot of misconceptions about the temperament of these animals. It's been said that they are very defensive, they can be very jittery when encountered, and it's even said that they are outwardly aggressive towards people, that they'll go out of their way to harm humans. And you can see we're handling her right now on this piece of bark. But what we really want to do is separate the facts from 
from fiction. We want to understand what these animals are really like. And the best way to do that is to take the bark away and get this amazing wandering spider in hand properly. So I think we will do just that. I know what you're thinking. Dudes are pretty happy to let the world's deadliest spider crawl all over them. And don't get me wrong, we're pumped. But don't confuse our excitement for a lack of caution, because we can't afford to make a mistake out here. Getting bitten by a wandering spider can end tragically, and we're much too far from a hospital for fast treatment. So one slip up, and our trip is over. Remember, this girl is carrying the most potent venom of any spider on Earth. A terrifying cocktail of neurotoxins that attacks your central nervous system and floods the bite site with excruciating pain. And that's if you're lucky enough that it doesn't go systemic. If that happens, you can expect muscle spasms, nausea, paralysis, organ failure, and yes, even death. Given that these spiders have killed people before, including healthy adults, I might add, it probably seems like quite a stupid idea to be picking one up. But we truly believe that these animals are more than the monsters they're made out to be, and we're willing to put ourselves on the line to prove it. So without further ado, Let's see what this spider makes of my hand. All right, Harry, if you want to come in. Absolutely. I have not gotten to see her really up close yet, but she is beautiful and absolutely massive. So why don't we see if she will just walk right onto your hand off this piece of bark. This is the moment of truth. She's got her front legs out. Is she gonna move? There she, there goes. she is. Now at this point, we want to keep our voices down. We want to make no sudden movements, no jerky motions. We want to keep this spider as calm and comfortable as possible. She really is being incredibly relaxed, but with animals that are as venomous as wandering spiders are, they demand a certain level of respect. This is something that no one should ever attempt to do unless you have the years of experience working with arachnids and working with animals generally that Evan and I are fortunate enough to have. Even in a situation where they're potentially uncomfortable, being free handled like this is not an interaction that this spider would be accustomed to. This is not something that she would typically deal with. As far as she's concerned, we're basically just an extension of her environment. We are more likely a piece of wood to her, more so than a predator trying to carry her off. And that's all about how we're handling this. Very much so. If we were to be squeezing her or pinching her body against our hand at all, it's more likely that we could initiate a harmful interaction. But if we're gentle, our movements are slow, we're not causing any unnecessary stress to her, she's perfectly content to just explore our hands just the same way she was exploring that piece of bark. Absolutely. It's really important to remember why these animals have extremely potent venom in the first place. Wandering spiders, as their name would suggest, are actually wanderers. They're quite nomadic in their lifestyle. So they will wander across the forest floor and in the vegetation looking for prey items, oftentimes that are more mobile and agile than the spider itself. So they need that really toxic venom to be able to quickly subdue their prey so that it doesn't get away from them. They're feeding on mostly arthropods, but also small vertebrates like lizards and frogs. So that powerful venom is just a tool that she uses to help her survive. Having one of the world's strongest venoms may seem excessive, but because wandering spiders don't build webs or burrows like other spiders, overpowering their prey with venom is really their only way of securing a meal. As active hunters, they can only eat as much as they can successfully catch. And even when they do spot a potential meal, they usually only have a few seconds to react before their prey has a chance to escape. So they really need to make every opportunity count. But that's not the only reason their venom has to be so strong. As they roam the forest floor in search of food, they're being hunted as often as they're doing the hunting themselves. And that powerful venom is their most effective defense against predators. We may not like it, but the wandering spider's venom is undeniably the right answer to the problems they face. And it's actually one of the biggest reasons that they've become such a successful species. Now we want to address a question that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering right now, which is why did we push this interaction so far to free handle the world's deadliest spider? Though I already know our grandmother does not want to hear it, this is a calculated risk and there is a reason behind it. We want to clarify right off the bat that we are not claiming that wandering spiders are not dangerous to people because they can be. 
We've heard from a lot of people that Brazilian wandering spiders can be extremely defensive when encountered, so please understand that not all wandering spiders are going to behave like the one we interacted with, especially if you try to pick one up. They are wild animals at the end of the day, and they can behave unpredictably and very differently depending on the circumstances. However, a lot of people believe that these spiders are so aggressive that they will attack anything that gets too close, and they have this idea in their head that just because wandering spiders have deadly venom and such a bad-tempered attitude, that they'll go out of their way to bite whenever they have the chance. It's actually that point that we want to use this free handling interaction to address. Because though the things that people think about these spiders being super defensive and dangerous to people aren't totally wrong, there's so much more to their story than just that. The crux of our point, and the reason we pushed this interaction so far, is to prove that these spiders are thinking, feeling beings with nuance and purpose behind their behaviors. They're not just killers running on autopilot. And dare I say it, there are actually some thoughts behind those eyes. In the case of the encounter that we had, what's especially cool is that the spider was able to realize that it wasn't in danger and then interact with us. You can really think about wandering spiders the same way you would think about a lion or a bear. They're absolutely dangerous if threatened or approached improperly, but they have so much more going on in their lives beyond just attacking humans. The more you work with spiders, the more you can see that they're actually responding to how the situation makes them feel. And though it may be kind of weird to think of spiders as feeling things, they absolutely do. They feel fear and pain, but also calmness, and believe me, when they're scared, they'll let you know. But when they're calm, they also let you know that with the way that they behave. While working with this girl, we were paying close attention to her body language and behavioral cues, because those are the gauges that we've learned to interpret to tell how the spider is feeling and know what is safe to do and what isn't. We could tell by the fact that she was moving really slowly and deliberately that she wasn't too bothered by our presence. No, she really didn't show any signs of defensiveness. There were no threat postures where they throw their legs up and look really intimidating. She never even made an attempt to try and bite or even show us her fangs at all. She was actually remarkably relaxed given what was going on. That's true. I mean, she pretty much just explored our hands and didn't even react to the fact that she was being held up by giant primates. Which would be an understandably terrifying experience for an animal that's that small that has probably never seen a human this close up in its life. True. The bottom line is that wandering spiders are not out to get people, even though they are capable of potentially hurting them. Even their scariest and deadliest features are just a part of their fascinating story. And the whole purpose of this test is to help people understand that and start to see the bigger picture. Even with a spider that's this considerably venomous in hand, she has no reason to interpret this as a harmful interaction. As long as we are gentle, as long as we're calm, and being calm in this interaction is incredibly important. It is a little bit nerve wracking working with a spider like this, but, ooh, let's see what she'll do here. Even passing between our hands, we just have to understand that this animal will remain calm as long as we do the same. This is unreal. I don't think it gets any clearer than this. We can literally hand her off between- <laughs> That's insane. Or we can hand her off to each other. And she still is just as calm as any spider I've ever worked with. And this just goes to show that just because something is dangerous, just because something has deadly venom, doesn't mean that we need to fear it. This has been one of the most unforgettable arachnid experiences I have ever had. I'm sure Ev, you feel the same Yo, way. Yo, absolutely. So Spencer, thank you so much for making this possible and helping us work with this incredible spider. And I think now it is time to release her back where we found her. It's been raining quite a lot tonight, so hopefully she'll be able to find some cover under this banana leaf. You know that leaf, there you go. There you go, sweetheart. As you are, darling. That's what we like to see. A beautiful spider released back into the wild where she belongs, not squished out of fear or anything like that. 
just back into the environment where she can continue to be a part of this incredible ecosystem. But dude, coolest spider I've ever seen. <laughs> this is an awesome that was one. amazing. Learning to coexist with potentially deadly animals is never easy, but in the case of the wandering spider, it's extremely important that we do, because the truth is, we don't always have a choice. Without a nest or burrow to return to each morning after a night of hunting, they seek shelter in whatever kind of cover they can find to escape the morning sun. That often leads them right into human spaces, which unfortunately causes a lot of conflict between these spiders and people. Look, I totally get why having the world's most toxic spider move into your backyard or even your house would be terrifying for most people. But I hope this interaction has shown you that even the deadliest creatures have no interest in harming us as long as we show them the same respect. Sharing the truth about feared and misunderstood animals is a huge part of what we do on this channel, and we couldn't have asked for a better way to end our Ecuador series. We spent a whole month there shooting content that we could only have dreamed of before. And if you want to come along with us on the adventure of a lifetime, check out our full playlist to see some of the most incredible wildlife that Ecuador has to offer. But if watching us freehandle a wandering spider gave you the creeps, there's another spider you should meet that could change everything you think about these animals. The Purple Bloom Bird Eater. Check out this video to see our mission to find this impressive tarantula. And who knows, it might just cure your arachnophobia for good. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.